Hello everyone. To study functions of two variables, we're now going to introduce partial derivatives. In Calculus 1, when we study functions of one variable, derivatives are very, very, very important in order to study functions. You might remember that the first derivative of a function help us decide if a function is increasing or decreasing, and the second derivatives a derivative helps us decide if a function is concave up or concave down. So there's a lot of information with derivatives. And the way derivatives are introduced is by using the following idea. How is the output changing if the input is changing a little bit? When you look at the formal uh, limit definition of the derivative, f prime of a is equal to the limit of h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So in other words, so a lot of information here, but the numerator of this expression is really how the output is changing. So we call this change delta y over a change or small change in the x's or the input, which is delta x. But that's for a function of one variable. There's only one way to change the input and then measure how the output changes. But for function of two variables, there's two inputs. So we can look at how the output changes by changing the x or changing the y. Thus, we will have two derivatives, and we call these derivatives partial derivatives for the function. A lot of information here. Okay, I'm just gonna do it too much, but don't worry, we'll go over the definition. And of course, we'll jump into examples to clarify the whole deal. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x at a point a, b inside the domain of your function is given by the following. So here we're looking at the function and how is the output changing when we're changing the input x, not y. So here it's very, very crucial to realize that y equal b is fixed when you're computing the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And it's only the input x that changes from a to a plus h. And when you're looking at this variation of the output that I'm going to call delta z, assuming here that the function is also labeled by the letter z, so you're looking at how is the output changing with respect to a change of the input x. So it's the exact same idea, but only x is changing. And then you try to measure what happens if you're looking at smaller and smaller changes and if this numerical process exists and goes to a specific number, we call that number the derivative of f with respect to x at the point a, b. There's a lot of notation here, but when you're computing the derivative of f with respect to x, you're going to use f of x, or you're going to use at a, b, or you're going to use del z over del x, those little six that are kind of flip in the evil dimension, or del f over del x, it depends, and the vertical bar a, b just means that you're doing this at a specific point. But if this limit exists for uh, a subset, let's say v, inside the Cartesian plane, well, now you can define a function that is computed with this process. And that function is, of course, the partial derivative, and we call it f of x, x, y, or simply put, sometimes we just use f of x if it's clear that the two variables are known. Okay, so um, that's the definition. We're not really going to use that definition to compute partial derivatives, but this definition is really meant as a friendly reminder of what we've done before for function of one variable. So what happens to the output y when the input x changes? Now we're looking at how is the output z behaving as the input x is changing, and that's the, uh, the, the, the initial idea behind a partial derivative of f with respect to x. Now you can do the exact same thing for the other variables. So if you want to talk about the partial derivative of f of x with respect to y, so suppose here again we use z as the output variable, the dependent variable, um, then the partial derivative of f with respect to y is looking at how is the output changing as you're changing the input uh, why? So here, again, very, very crucial moment um, in order to make this happen. So your first variable now, x equal a, is fixed. 
and you're looking at a change in the output, so the delta Z, as you're looking at a change from the input Y. So it's delta Z over delta Y now, and you're trying to study the behavior of how are the outputs changing as the inputs in Y are changing for very small variation. So you're looking at the limit as H goes to zero. So this simply means for very, very, very small changes, what's happening with the output change, uh, rate of change. And if this number goes somewhere, uh, then we call this, um, part, we call this number the partial derivative of f with respect to y. And of course, again, if this process exists over a subset of R2, then we can define a function of two variables over that subset, and that function is going to be called f of y in general, if there's no ambiguity with the variables. Again here, a lot of terminology, a lot of notation, f sub y for partial derivative of f with respect to y, or del z over del y, or del f over del y, so all of those are meant to refer to that other derivative. But what is really, really crucial here is to understand that for a function of two variables, there is two partial derivatives. And even if I took the time to kind of introduce the, the, the formal limit definition of those two partial derivatives, we're not going to use them to actually compute partial derivatives. We're really going to jump into computing partial derivatives using rules of differentiation. Okay, so you have to worry too much about this. The next remark is absolutely, the next remarks are absolutely essential. They will save your life. You don't want to compute limits. You want to compute partial derivatives, and we're going to do that right now. All right, so how do we compute partial derivatives? So first, to find f of x, y. So to find the first partial derivative of f with respect to x, Basically, there is no new rules. You need to take the derivative of f with respect to x as if the variable y is a constant. And you're really using rules of differentiation, a function of one variable, and y is simply a constant or a coefficient, depending on where it is in the equation of your function of two variables. So there is no new rules of differentiation. You just have to be careful and you need to kind of uh, make a little abstraction in thinking about, okay, the y that I have in my function is treated as a constant, and I'm just applying the normal rules of differentiation where the variable is x. And then it's the exact same thing. If you want to find the partial derivative of f with respect to y, now the rules are flip. All the x's are constant or coefficient, and you're applying the rules of differentiation of function of one variable where the variable is y. So in a nutshell, no new rules of differentiation to compute partial derivatives. You just need to be careful and just follow the rules that you've seen in Calculus 1 and just be careful with which one is fixed and which one is the variable, and then you apply the rules accordingly. So that's the essential idea behind those computations of partial derivatives. There's only one variable when you're computing f of x. It's x. There's only one variable when you're computing f of y, it's y. So if you're trying to find a derivative at a specific point, so f of x, let's say at 2, 1, you compute f of x using the rules of differentiation of function of one variable, where the variable is x and y is a constant, and then you just sub in every x is by 2 and every y by 1. So it's just an evaluation process. So computing a specific value of a derivative is just an evaluation after you compute f of x or f of y depending on the question and all the rules of differentiation product rule quotient rule chain rule are exactly as before so it's as easy or as hard depending on your camp here as uh, functions of one variable and the best way to really assimilate that is by going through some examples Right. First example, suppose our function f is 2x5y squared minus x cubed minus x4 minus 5xy plus 1. Let's compute both partial derivatives. So if you start with f of x, so the way it works here, the way I like to do it, in my equation, I have five terms. My first term, if I want to compute 2x5y squared, the only part that is the variable here is x5. So the x5 here, when I compute x5, the derivative is 5x4. I'm just using my normal 
power rule, the five falls up front as a coefficient, and the new power is the former power minus one, so I get 5x4. And the two or the y squared are just coefficients that stays in, okay? So they don't go away. Like 2y squared are just like a, a, a ugly coefficient that stays in. What about x cubed here? Well, x cubed, the derivative of x cubed with respect to x will be 3x squared, just like good old days. What about y4? Well, when I do y4 here, y4 is alone. It's a constant. The derivative of a constant is going to be simply zero. Now for the, the fourth term, my only variable x is here. The derivative of x is one. So the derivative of five xy will be five times one times y. And then of course the plus one, the constant just like before will go to zero. And once I clean up my thing, I get 10 x four y squared minus three x squared minus five y. That's the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Now you do the exact same thing, okay, with respect to y. So you just go through your expression again. So here for the first term, my variable y is at the y squared term. The derivative of y squared is 2y. So the, the 2x5 now is just a coefficient that stays up front. Now the derivative of x cubed with respect to y, x cubed is just a constant now. So the derivative of a constant is just zero. Bye -bye -le. Now for y4, well y4 now, I just use the rule of differentiation. Remember now y is the variable. So the derivative of y4 using the power rule, you get 4y cubed. And then for 5xy, now the variable is here. The y the derivative of y is one. So you get 5x, which is just a coefficient here. At times one, and then the constant one here again will just go to zero. So, so I get another zero. And then if you clean your act a bit, you get four x five y minus four y cubed minus five x, and that's the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So remember, there's two derivatives now, and the big challenge is to make that distinction between which one is the variable and which one is a fixed. And then the one that is fixed is either a constant, when you have a term that is completely depending on y, that will go to zero, or if it's next to an expression with respect to the other variable, then it's just a coefficient that stays in. Okay, so you just keep it as it is when it's a coefficient. So just learn how to make this distinction between a coefficient and a constant coefficient. You keep them when they're fixed, and constant, they all go to zero. All right, I know deep down you want more, so I'm going to give you more. Next example, let g of x be equal to y squared times ln of x cubed plus y4. Let's compute the partial derivative with respect to x and also the partial derivative with respect to y. So for x, so I really like to, when I'm computing a partial derivative, to see in my formula where the x's are and where the y are. So for the partial derivative of g with respect to x, I have only one term that depends on x, and it's the uh, x cubed term, which is within the logarithmic function. So it's inside, so remember this, so it's inside the logarithmic term. But even if I have a product of two things, y squared is multiplying ln of x cubed plus y4, it's not a product of two terms that depends on x, so this is not a product rule. The only term that you have to differentiate is ln of x cubed plus y4, because y squared is just a coefficient. So when you're going to compute del g over del x, the y squared is just a coefficient that you can keep outside by the problem. -le. And then you need to compute the derivative of ln of x cubed plus y4, which is within. So here, my variable x is within. So I like to put this in a rectangle here. So it's within my formula. So I need to use a chain rule. So I know that the derivative of ln of x is one over x. So if I have ln of something, I'm going to get one over that thing. So whatever is inside here does not change. It just goes down at the denominator. So I'm using a chain rule here. So by the chain rule, I have one over x cubed plus y4, and then I need to multiply afterwards. That's a chain rule idea. I need to multiply afterwards by the derivative with respect to x of x cubed plus y4. And again here, if I'm focusing, I only have x cubed here, 
that depends on x. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And then the derivative of y4, blah, 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 okay, it goes away to 0. And if you just multiply everything, so the y squared on the 1 and the 3x squared on the y squared, you can simplify this to 3 x squared y squared over x cubed plus y4. So here, this partial derivatives only needed a chain rule because the only occurrence of x in this formula was within the logarithmic term. So you have to be very, very careful in order to choose the right, uh, the right rule of differentiation. Now let's see what happens when we compute the other partial derivative with respect to y. So here we go. So same function, but now I'm going to label my y variable. So I have y squared, and then within the logarithmic term, I have y cubed. Sorry, y to the power 4. So now I still have that same problem where the variable is within the logarithmic term, but now I have the product of two things. I have that my function y squared is multiplying the function ln of x cubed y4, and this is the product of two things because, and then because it's a product of two things and because these two things depend on y, I have no choice to use the product rule. So I'm using the product rule here. So I have to go u prime, but of course here u prime is with respect to, to y. So it's u prime with respect to y times v. So it's the same, same, same product rule, but you're doing it with respect to y times u times v prime, but of course the v prime here is going to be uh, done with respect to uh, y. So you're going to get v y. Well, our time, sorry, technical difficulties. So v y. So I'm using my product rule. And now remember, you're just doing it with respect to y. So the derivative of y squared will turn into 2y. The second term, ln of x cubed plus y4 stays the same, plus y squared. And now you have to use your chain rule again to compute the derivative of ln of x cubed plus y4. So I have ln of some stuff. OK, so I have ln of some stuff. So it's going to be 1 over that stuff times the derivative of that stuff. But remember, it's with respect to y now. So I only have a y4 here. The derivative of y4 is 4y cubed. And then if you clean everything, so if you multiply everything at the numerator, you can simplify this to 2y ln of x cubed plus y4 plus 4y squared y5, sorry, over uh, x cubed plus y4. So here, and this is the main difficulty, choosing the right rule of differentiation. So the function y squared ln of x cubed plus y4, when you're computing the partial derivative with respect to x, it's not a product rule because both terms, the y squared and the ln of x cubed plus y4, do not depend on x. Only the logarithmic term depends on x. So it's not a product rule. It's just directly a chain rule, and you keep the y squared as a coefficient. But when you're doing it with respect to y, then you have a product of two terms where both terms, the y squared and the ln of x cubed plus y4, both of them depend on y. So then you have to use a product rule. And remember, you always use a product rule using, of course, the variables of interest. So here I have a product rule with respect to y. So I'm just computing partial derivative with respect to y the whole way. OK, so and that's the main difficulty here, just to choose the right rule of differentiation. But I cannot stress enough that there is no there's no new rule here. It's either a product rule, a quotient rule, or a chain rule. You're using the exact same trick as before. You just have to be careful because some of those variables are fixed in the process.